Welcome to a broadcast of the recent Lorain County Commissioner's General Meeting. Unless otherwise announced, meetings are held Wednesday morning at 9.30 at the Administration Building, 226 Middle Avenue, 4th Floor, Downtown Elyria. These are public meetings and you are invited to attend. Agendas are posted prior to the meeting at www.lorraincounty.us. Click on Departments to see the Commissioner's page, then click on View Agenda. Good morning. Can we stand for the Pledge of Allegiance, please? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Good morning. Welcome to the January 31st Lorraine County Board of Commissioners meeting. And our inspirational word for the day, a soft answer puts away wrath as water puts out fire. Okay. Commissioner Kukowski has our dog today. She was crying for me during the Pledge of Allegiance. <laughs> come on, come on, baby girl. Oh, look at this cute little one we have today. Um, I said it's a King Corsa mix. She's about three or four years old. Uh, she was found in Elyria and she's gonna be available for adoption tomorrow so you can come down to Loring County Dog Kennel pick her up take her home uh, if not we have how many more dogs do we have 31 dogs so if she's not your style we got plenty to pick from and licenses are due today uh, if you don't get your license you will have to pay double what the the fee is so make sure you get that done thanks So moved. Second. Discussion. Mr. Kayla. Aye. Mr. Lundy. Aye. Mr. Aye. Appropriations. So moved. Second. Discussion. Mr. Kayla. Aye. Mr. Lundy. Aye. Ms. Kowski. Aye. Transfers. So moved. Second. Discussion. Mr. Kayla. Aye. Mr. Lundy. Aye. Ms. Kowski. Aye. No advances, no repayments, requisitions. So moved. Second. Discussion. Mr. Kayla. Aye. Mr. Lundy. Aye. Ms. Kowski. Aye. Travel. So moved. Second. Discussion. Kayla. Aye. Mr. Lundy. Aye. Ms. Kowski. Aye. Bills. So moved. Second. Discussion. Mr. Kayla. Aye. Mr. Lundy. Aye. Ms. Kowski. Aye. Authorize various personnel actions of the weekend on the summary sheet for employees within jurisdictional Marine County Commissioners. Mr. Cordes. Thank you, Mr. President. <laughs> <laughs> the uh, I do have a number of personnel issues, potential hires at the collection center, um, custodial some apps I want to go over for some other positions that we have posted. Um, update on uh, labor negotiations. Still working on a uh, sale of real estate and a purchase of real estate, in which we haven't moved very much, but I need to update you on that. And one pending legal matter. All of those issues will have on the Sunshine Act for executive session discussion. So I'd ask at the conclusion of our regular board meeting, we go into executive session and then we discuss those matters that I've detailed. Thank you. Approving away the reading of the minutes of January 24th. So moved. Second. Discussion. Mr. Kayla. Aye. Mr. Lundy. Aye. Ms. Kowski. Aye. Authorized payment of $1,000 to Vince J. Giovanzanio, Inc., DBA, Reedy Scallon, Giovanzio. Giovanazzo. Azio. Giovanazzo. Okay, thanks, Ted. <laughs> Funeral home, Lorraine, for indigent veteran James Quinlan, Lorraine, in accordance with the ORC 590125. So moved. Second. Discussion. Mr. Kalo. Aye. Mr. Lundy. Aye. Ms. Kowski. Aye. Award various contracts for a 911 building alteration project in the amount of $4,493,500. Issue notice to proceed on or about February 5th and complete on or by April 15, 2018. Authorize the minister to notify auditor to release retainers to completion of the contract. Item 1 General Contract Work, Evirocom Construction, Cleveland, $467,500. Item 2 Plumbing, to Ross Builders, North Ridgeville, $20,000. Item 3, HVAC contract work, Ross Builders, North Ridgeville, 130000 
Item 4, electrical technology contract work by Lens of Electric Lorraine, 876000 for a total contract award of $1,493,500, and the pre-bid estimate was $2,500,000. <coughs> so moved. Second. Discussion. Nice savings. Mm -hmm. Well, it was, you know, it was a pretty good savings, Commissioner, and, uh, excuse me, you know, some of the, uh, <coughs> the building was a great building when we, we purchased it for very, I would say, dimes on the dollar mm -hmm. with our collaboration and that being that it was a call center it didn't require an extensive renovation but some of the works just to explain because most people won't know what we're doing um, we added we took an area of the open part of the building and we're closing it off to provide our areas for the records and warrants mm -hmm. uh, that work that's done through 911 we consolidated that work and we consolidated dispatching with the sheriff's department a number of years ago for uh, cost savings and efficiencies so <coughs> pardon me again so uh, that work has to be done and then we're renovating some existing offices because we need a locker room for the employees and we need some changing facilities because a lot of times they're there multiple shifts and we none of the none of those things existed currently um, but it's a minor amount of conversion we're also coding uh, the windows with some film that that helps with uh, breakage uh, to give the building more security actually I'm told that between the uh, strangeness of the window to a point where it can stop a bullet so uh, there was a few more windows in the building that I like but that's again once the reason why we're putting another wall in because we're putting the records area towards the outside of the building so that the lack of another term the, the bullpen area uh, will not be visible through any access at all so that all works very very well and we're upgrading all the sound deadening panels they, they didn't have that problem when they had a lot of folks in there but we need it much quieter than the building is right now so that's a lot of the work that's going on and then this you know painting carpeting <coughs> cleaning i think everybody will be impressed when they when they get a chance to tour the building with what we've done out there the exterior work's done this is the interior work i think we're pretty well on track uh, we had to upgrade some of the hvac not because the building needed it. The, the, the systems were in pretty good shape when we got the building, but we're putting in big equipment rooms and big servers and datters, and that requires its cool. own set of cooling and, uh, and maintenance to, uh, to, to deal with that. So that's hence the HVAC that's going in. Um, some, of the, some of the additional electric workers support, we're putting a lot more infrastructure in the building than they had even when it was a call center for 911. That's the extensive electric work. Plus, you know, we started that drive up for warrants a few years ago mm -hmm. in the back of 91. There was a lot of resistance at first, if you recall, but then everybody just really, really liked it so much after they got used to it. And we're also adding that feature to this. Uh, we're using a pneumatic system. It'll, the windows will be there. They'll be able to see the turn area in the parking lot. Deputies will be able to come up, much like you go for your prescription drug, and the tube comes mm -hmm. down in some, in some locations. Um, and we'll be able to send the warrants right out to the car. Could not believe the amount of massive amount of time savings between parking, getting out, going into a building, coming back. You know, it's, it's, it saves a lot, a lot of time. And as you know, we, we don't have enough deputies on the road to begin with. So, 15 minutes here, an hour there, you know, through, through the course of a day, picking up several warrants really makes a big difference. That's a little bit pricey, but it'll return the investment over the next two decades very easily. Uh, and, and also that keeps the building closed. We don't have to have people coming and going uh, from the 911 center, uh, which becomes a little bit of a distraction occasionally. So I'm, I'm pretty pleased with the way things are going with the bids. But we have, we have a long way to go yet. And sh was that, uh, is that a long way to go? A short time to get there. Yeah. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm still hopeful for mid to late April uh, for um, being able to at least allow the public to tour the building. We will not be up and running at the center probably until, I would say, July, mid to late July. We have a lot of training to do. Once all the work's done, then we have an extensive amount of training we need to do on the new equipment and then figuring how to make the transition. And then we'll do some work at what's going to become our backup, which is our primary center right now. So we have some additional expenditures there to uh, fresh net area because there's two sets of equipment coming. <coughs> One's going to be located at the primary location, and there'll be a, a duplicate equipment uh, to support the new the new uh, generation 91 equipment located at the backup. Uh, so still a lot of work even after we get all of this done, but, but it's moving at a, at a, a good pace right now. Awesome. Okay. Great.
Hi. Hi. Job and family authorized purchase service agreement with Murray Ridge Production Center, Leary, in the amount of 1,700 cleaning services for fiscal year 18, effective February 1st, 2018, through January 31st, 2019, and authorized director to execute on behalf of the board with commissioner's approval as to form. So moved. Second. Discussion. Mr. Caleb. Aye. Mr. Lundy. Aye. Ms. Kowski. Aye. Solid waste approved contract with ERG Environmental Services LLC, Bowling Green for operation of lamp and ballast collection for recycling program. Your proposal is received as being most responsive, complying with specifications, and is effective for the program years 2018 through 2020. So moved. Second. Discussion. Mr. Kale. Aye. Mr. Lundy. Aye. Ms. Kowski. Aye. Engineer post load limit signs at state weight limit reduction by 25% on all Carlisle Township roads for the fall and moisture period in accordance with the ORC 5577.07, effective February 1st through May 1st, 2018. So moved. Second. Discussion. Mr. Kalo. Aye. Mr. Lundy. Aye. Ms. Kowski. Aye. Post load limit signs at state weight limit reduction by 25% on all Eden Township roads for the fall and moisture period in accordance with the ORC 5577.07, effective February 1st through May 1st, 2018. So moved. Second. Discussion. Mr. Kalo. Aye. Mr. Lundy. Aye. Ms. Kowski. Aye. Execute cooperation agreement with City of Elyria for OPWC round 32 applications for repair and reservice West River Road from Overland Elyria Road in Carlisle Township to Infirmary Road Elyria. Estimated cost of OPWC is 559000 So moved. Second. Discussion. Mr. Kalo. Aye. Mr. Lundy. Aye. Ms. Kowski. Aye. Authorized engineer to reimburse the city of North Ridgeville as proceeds of the grant agreement are received from the state based on agreement with the county engineer and ODOT for the Avon Belt and Mills Road roundabout project in the cities of Avon and North Ridgeville. July 2017, TID was notified by ODOT. Project was approved. Estimated cost was $1,375,000 and funding assistance of $250,000 from TID. So moved. Second. Discussion. Mr. Kalo. Aye. Mr. Lundy. Aye. Aye. <laughs> Sheriff award contract to Bay Mechanical Lorraine in the amount of 257000 for correctional facility rooftop <coughs> multi-zone unit replacement project. Three bids received on August 29th as being the most responsive compliant with specifications. Issue notice to proceed on February 5th and complete by May 25th. Authorized administrator to notify the auditor to release retainage at completion of project. So moved. Second. <coughs> Discussion? Mr. Kalo. Aye. Mr. Lundy. Aye. Ms. Kowski. Aye. Authorized purchase of the 2007 Ford Crown Vic from Anderson Township, Ohio, in the amount of 3000 to be paid from the LETF account to be used for the auxiliary deputies. So moved. Second. Discussion. Mr. Kalo. Aye. Mr. Lundy. Aye. Ms. Kowski. Aye. Mr. Cordes. Thank you, Madam Clerk. <coughs> yeah, I don't know if the commissioners will bring it up in their report, but uh, we had a stormwater meeting yesterday, mm -hmm. so if you're going to report on that, what you did, I'll, I'll yield on that. Uh, that's fine. Uh, yesterday we, we met as a stormwater district, uh, which we do probably two or three times a year and as needed. And uh, the board uh, adopted the recommendations of the stormwater advisory committee. And I think yesterday you approved $400,000 in grants into the unincorporated area of the community, commonly known as the townships. Ten uh, projects. Ten projects. Uh, it's the... Um, second round of the increased funding from the 250000 to the 400000 that we've done for grants. Uh, I don't have the press release yet, but I will have it for the media later if they call, uh, announcing those grants in communities. Uh, we have a lot of communities asking for grants now. The projects and the coming in are pretty worthy. It's getting a little harder to go through them and pick, uh, but uh, it's been a very successful uh, operation working with the SWAC and the townships and then with the stormwater district. Uh, and then we have uh, we have an opportunity to uh, really review a lot of drainage problems out in the community. Quite frankly, I'm, I'm beginning to know more about water. And I thought it used to be just sewage. Now it's sewage and water than I ever thought I would. Uh, but these are amazing projects, so you may want to speak more in your business. But I want to make sure that we let folks know that uh, that work yesterday at the Stormwater District happened and other things we discussed. But that was the biggest thing that I think has uh, some some uh, community interest. Mm -hmm. Other than that, I'll yield to council. Thank you. I do have uh, two issues of pending litigation that I would like to discuss with the commissioners in the executive session. 
Commissioner's report. Uh, well, Thursday, Commissioner Lundy and I attended the opiate forum at Lorain County Community College put on by the Philanthropic and Community Coalition. Uh, their goal is to try to put all the agencies that are working on this issue independently to try to figure out how to work together to be more effective. They're trying to find best practices to develop, to develop continuum of care. Uh, we also need to educate the public and work on prevention. And also developing a system for data collection and coordination is another goal. It's always easier to get grant money when you have data to back it up. Uh, and it's going to take everybody working together if we are ever going to get this problem, um, have better outcomes. Um, because right now, even with all these great people working hard, uh, it seems to be getting worse and not better. So we need to get that under control. Um, my condolences to the family of Brad Smith from Elyria. Brad's been doing my taxes for over 30 years. Um, he'll be missed by a lot of people. He's a really great guy. Huge, huge, huge Ohio State fan. I mean, his whole basement was, everything was Ohio State. Yeah, he's a great guy. Um, Monday, I had my Goodwill board meeting. Uh, we have another new CEO. <laughs> Again? Uh, again. Three evolving chairs. You are, you are one tough you boss it? out there. I guess so. I, I don't wonder know. how I survive here. I know. Uh, <laughs> Was actually, it the fourth one? Yeah. Yeah. But uh, we actually promoted from within. Uh, Greg Grugel, who was our uh, guy that took care of all of our stores and really great retail guy, we moved him up to CEO. He's actually taken over the couple times when we were in transition. So it's a really good uh, guy, but he will be the face of the agency. So hopefully, I might even have him come up here and introduce himself one of these days. So, um, And then congrats to Corey Shaver for a successful fundraiser last night at Speak of the Devil. Uh, if you haven't been down there on Fifth Street, it's this, they did amazing work in this place. It's really nice. And, uh, in Lorraine. Yeah, in Lorraine. Fifth Street in Lorraine. Did I, so I you said Fifth Street. Oh, okay, Fifth, Fifth Street in Lorraine. Yeah, downtown Lorraine. So uh, if you haven't been there, take a ride over. It's a really high classy uh, establishment. So end of my report. Yes, it is, with fine cocktails. Yeah. And great pizza, too, by Genzo Soto Smash Food Truck. So. It was good. Yes. Very good. Um, <clears throat> I attended the Loring County Chamber of Commerce annual meeting on Thursday when my commissioners were doing the opioid. Uh, I'd like to thank Ed Skimmon. He ended his two-year term as president of the uh, chairman of the board, president for the Loring County Chamber of Commerce. Did a lot of great things while he was here bringing the community together. They really increased the amount of participation within the business community. They increased the amount of membership. Uh, and like the Congratulate Kevin Knight from Heidelberg Distributing, who will be the new board chair for the next two years. Kevin's a real great guy. I've known him for a long time and really proactive within uh, the community and working with the chamber and also philanthropically with Heidelberg. They're always participating with the different entities. And again, the Stormwater District, again, the $400,000 we gave out, 10 great projects in 10 different communities around the county. Uh, and also like the, you know, the update from Don Romancic in regards and Peter Swick to working with uh, the city of Oberlin and helping them well, you know, it's, start it's their stormwater <coughs> utility, which I mean, when we get that municipal and township cooperation, I think it's going to make it move even better as we go around. I mean, Oberlin is stuck, not stuck, but their placement in the county, they are surrounded by townships. It's, uh, it's been a long-term work on the collaboration. Mm -hmm. um, <coughs> accessing as a member of our stormwater district, they will be actually a sub, well, more or less I'll turn them a sub-district, mm -hmm. uh, but they'll be able to bill uh, through the auditor's office as part of being uh, in our stormwater district on the tax duplicate rather than trying to send that all out and do all that billing. That's tremendous cost savings. Uh, so uh, we're hoping to further the relationship. We, we actually loaned them the money to get their stormwater district up and running mm -hmm. and brought in the consultants that we use successfully to work with them. It's been a slow process. But uh, one that uh, Don uh, Romanchik is ground uh, through with uh, with folks out there through now through two city managers <laughs> right. and and a host of changes on council. Uh, as you know, Oberlin has a strong city council and formal mm -hmm. government. So when changes there happen, you have some changes in thinking a bit. Uh, but uh, we're reaching the uh, the last lap, mm -hmm. and I'm, I'm very happy with all the work that's been done there, and I'm looking forward to even more. We we need to make this work. We need to put a lot of more energy into it, uh, as much as it requires, because there's other uh, villages out there that are in a similar situation. Mm -hmm. As you know, we're working collaboratively in LaGrange right now. Right. 
uh, on a big ditch project right. and water uh, retention project out in Lagrange. Mm -hmm. It's it's the tip of the iceberg, but it but it's a thaw for us in being able to do uh, intergovernment um, projects that bring great value to uh, both the villages and the surrounding areas in the township. We have to have this kind of cooperation to um, to amplify our resources, as you know, that are never sufficient. Uh, but together, we can get a heck of a lot more done. So. Good work out there in Old Ward. I well, just I wanted to capitalize county, what you're saying. From the county perspective, though, we have the ability that we can work within all the political subdivisions and try and bring it, I mean, to fix stormwater just in Pittsfield or New Russia or <laughs> surrounding well, Oberlin they, and not Look at what we did and what we're doing in O'Leary Township and Sheffield Township. Right. Excuse me. <clears throat> I'm just getting over a pretty yeah. bad cold. I'm just starting it. Thank you. I'm I, I wanted to bring you something, Lori, and I guess I brought you the cold. Uh, the, the, uh, sorry about that. Uh, we're doing a stream restoration in, in Elyria Township, but basically it's not to solve any problem in Elyria Township. It's to solve a problem in Sheffield Township. And going into and, Lorraine from there. And going into the city of Lorraine uh, down on the 36, 38th? 36th Street, 36th Street ditch. Uh, ditch, which is a huge, huge ditch down there. Uh, the, the, uh, the project started as a detention and then, of course, there was wetlands issues after it was logged before we bought it. So we, we applied for grants. We brought federal money here. Again, our community development department, led by Don, <coughs> uh, brought these stream <coughs> restoration grants here. Uh, we've done one of those projects down in Eaton Township, as mm -hmm. you're aware, down there. We're now doing a big one up in Elyria Township to help stop flooding where? At the Sheffield Township Fire Department and, and Township Hall. Right. And, and then that's the first piece. We're also widening the, uh, right now is more, just a hole in the ground next to the Board of Elections between Gargus Hall and the Board of Election. We're going to widen that and we're going to, we're going to hold back a little bit more water there. It's not a, really a retention. Um, uh, it's more of a detention just to slow it down. And we're working downstream from there on additional land acquisition in, a, in an old paper platted subdivision that's never going to get built, uh, trying to pick up enough land down there to, I think, alleviate most of the flooding going down and heading right through the city of Lorraine oh, down uh, Lorraine, Clinton hope. Avenue. Right. <coughs> so uh, even though the city reaps the benefits, don't forget we're pushing all the water there. And as development occurs in the unincorporated area, which a lot of it has, we're pushing a lot more water to the cities. And the cities have a little bit of a right to be, mm -hmm. you know, somewhat, you know, saying that we got to solve some of that problem. Now we have to work collaboratively with the city too because they're going to receive benefit. Uh, but water that used to percolate now runs off, and it's got to run somewhere, and it runs north. And unfortunately, north is the the major urbanized areas in mm -hmm. Lorain County. So it's been it's been a real learning experience, and, and we we have to tease that cooperation as, as much as we can. But those are the multi jurisdictions that we're working for. Um, and I will tell you that you know this whole stream restoration project began when Bill Holtzman went out and kicked over a. a, a a beaver dam over there and started sending a lot more water up in the Sheffield Township. <laughs> he was trying to solve a, yes. a, a water problem in Elyria Township. Um, so, uh, but it's been it's been it's been fun, and I I don't think we get enough credit for how hard we work on these relationships. Thank you. End of my report. Yeah, this uh, uh, the stormwater grants is just another example of how the commissioners are working in partnership, uh, working with uh, the townships and the SWAC. I mean, this whole process. Townships are at the table. Everybody's in on the scoring. The projects are scored. Um, it's just a, an excellent example of how uh, governments should be working in partnership to improve uh, the communities and uh, even doubling uh, the amount for the grants. Uh, unlike the past, we're now up to $400,000 and uh, 10 projects being awarded. Just want to thank Don Romanchik and uh, Peter Zwick and, and uh, Jim Cordes and everyone involved for their efforts so I know it takes a lot of work uh, I think we had what maybe 18 projects that came in and able to handle about 10 of them for now but uh, so it shows there's always a demand there there's always a need there um, but uh, everybody's at the table involved in the process voting on the process and getting things done and it's just a, a great example of the partnerships another partnership that this board is uh, deeply committed to so uh, as uh, Lori had pointed out, had a chance to attend the Nord family announcement of the philanthropic and community coalition and the opioid epidemic. And um, I, would, I would strongly encourage you at home 
if you can to, to visit their website that they've set out set up which is called end the epidemic LC dot org and the epidemic LC for Lorain County dot org um, and it's you know it's quite alarming when you see the impact that the epidemics had on our county uh, the belief is then it's an estimated figure obviously that uh, prescription opioid misuse or abuse in the past year in the county it's estimated that as many as 35,000 of our residents um, could be misusing or abusing opioids at this time that's a it's a very alarming number uh, also alarming is the economic burden that it's placing on Lorain County uh, those estimates according to the information released by their study indicates uh, lost earnings and productivity of $139 million, uh, the burden to health care of $42 million, the criminal justice system, as we know all too well, over $7 million, and uh, child and family assistance, 4.5, and treatment and prevention, uh, 5.4. So that's for a, a total uh, burden to the, uh, to the community of close to $200 million. So um, as my colleagues uh, know all too well, we've had lots of discussions about it. We continue to work uh, in partnership with others uh, to address this issue, but it's uh, created a tremendous burden on uh, county government and the county as a whole. Obviously, that's why we got involved in the uh, uh, legal issue uh, because of the uh, damage it has caused uh, to the community, uh, but also we'll be uh, announcing a, a partnership that we're working on, a proposal that we hope will come to fruition uh, with a little help from Columbus, and uh, we'll be talking more about that later. Um, just also wanted to point out the transition team that is meeting to work with the families from Puerto Rico that are transitioning to Lorain County. Uh, that transition team has been doing, I, I think, a great job. I can't say enough about uh, all the work that's been put in by the many parties involved and we'll be uh, talking a little bit more about that. One of the early things that has been done is working in partnership with the community college and working with our marketing people from our travel and tourism department, which they were involved just purely from their social media and marketing skills to bring to the table, is uh, now the establishment of a, a landing page and a web page uh, where many of those families can go to get information about Lorain County. They can also print out a brochure that talks about all the services, where you can find hotels, where you can find medical assistance, questions about education and schooling. And um, it's in Spanish. I can't read it. Mm. But, <laughs> but no Joe but, Kennedy III, huh? You no, know, no. But it's, but it's very well, very well done. And, uh, um, but I, I just can't thank everybody enough for all the work they've been doing. We'll be meeting again on uh, Friday at 12.30 over at El Centro to discuss that a little bit more. And that completes my report. Uh, Tuesday at 11, we'll have our ISD meeting. Board correspondence. Move the reading be waived. Second. Discussion. Mr. Palo. Aye. Mr. Lundy. Aye. Ms. Kowski. Aye. Public comment. Anyone wishing to address the board this morning? No. Seeing none, motion to move into executive session is outlined by the county administrator and assistant county prosecutor. Second that motion. Mr. Palo. Aye. Mr. Lundy. Aye. Ms. Kowski. Aye. Aye. <laughs> This has been a broadcast of the recent Lorraine County Commissioner's General Meeting. Unless otherwise announced, meetings are held Wednesday morning at 9.30 at the Administration Building, 226 Middle Avenue, 4th Floor, Downtown Elyria. These are public meetings and you are invited to attend. Agendas are posted prior to the meeting at www.lorraincounty.us. Click on Departments to see the Commissioner's page. Then click on View Agenda for a printable copy of the agenda.